welcome to Parade Handmade. I would firstly like to celebrate and congratulate and welcome all of our new subscribers. We have about 42 on board at the moment and that is brilliant. So welcome to you. La 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 la. Boom. One little note of apology. Uh, some of you may have noticed last week's video was a little bit disastrous when it went up first. Possibly later too, but the main issue was the audio. The audio overlapped and did funny business. And I altered it and re-uploaded it and it's under a different URL and all that jazz, but it doesn't matter. It's up and it's fine. Thank you to the few new subscribers that came on during the original part. And I hope, I don't know how it's working yet, but I hope that people can find it again and that I don't get, you know, wrapped on the knuckles for duplicating content or anything mad like that. I hope it improved things for people and that everything is okay. So now you've happened on me on a really exciting day for me. anyway. I'm going to do felting, needle felting. So I want to felt this with some needle felting. I want to show you how simple it is to restyle, upstyle, recycle, whatever way you want to say it, a very plain thing. I had the look to acquire two of these. Now, these are acrylic jumpers from a recycle bag that came around. Salmon pink. I offered one to my mom already. It's not really her colour. Very cosy. I don't know what you call this, a turtle neck, a little bit of a polo neck, but two of these in similar they're small and medium but they're pretty similar in size they both fit me this one i'm going to play with so i'll bring in little features of autumn definitely the colors these colors reds purples gorgeous oranges deep reds a little bit of green definitely some darker greens if i can get them in that's tussa silk top that is so special that but you don't need much I'd like it to be beautifully embellished and I just want to show you how to use some dry needle felting and possibly other techniques but mainly it's the felting and I'm going to have some fun designing that and creating an image. You wouldn't traditionally needle felt onto fabric and certainly not onto acrylic but it's grand I do it all the time so that's mainly what I want to show you. So the main thing that I want to do with this is this is cozy I don't normally keep the necks in because as you know I like to have a bit of a V but I can still use that an illusion of that in the front if I if I decide to do it later but I want to keep it cozy for the autumn and winter in Ireland. Moving swiftly onward I hardly know where to start. These are my basic colours I didn't want to crowd the space so this is my top this is the front of the top I'm not going to take off the neck as I said and this is the point where I find the most difficult. There are way too many possibilities. And what I do to combat the issue there is I don't try to think of the best plan that I'm ever going to do ever in my whole life ever. I just say these are lovely and this is what I'm going to do today. I can change my mind slightly as I'm going along, but that is how I ease myself into a project like this. I'm still very excited about it, especially these colours. These colours just make me happy. I'm going to do a little bit of an imaginary thing with you now and I'll start my design. I'm thinking autumnal. So autumn leaves, which will have a little bit of green in them as well. Let's focus on leaves maybe to begin with. This is gorgeous. This is Tussa or Tussa. I'm not sure how you pronounce it. Silk, it is the softest, most beautiful. And as I said before, I like to have a little bit of a V-neck. I'm trying to visualise, do I want it to be in the treetops? If I'm having leaves, it kind of should be. But I don't want to really put in shoulds. I think I will just bring in the leaves. The leaves are the most obvious autumn emblem, so to speak. So I'm going to do that and just get on. You see, you have to just kind of rein it in and go for it. I'm going to do the basis part. Maybe half green, half. We can replace these later, you know, reposition them. I'm going to kind of focus as well a little bit on a V here. Maybe falling leaves, kind of just floating around and falling. It's what's coming to mind. So I'll definitely 
to tinge the sides of these leaves. I wonder will I do sycamore style or will I just do kind of beach style? Beach leaves go nice and bronze in the in the autumn winter. Well, definitely by winter, but I mean we're not into winter yet by a long stretch. But yeah, I'll show you now how I'm getting on. I'll just kind of move forward with this. <laughs> I'm working through it. I've kind of decided I'll probably do some more. A kind of a falling flurry of leaves just coming down from one side. Just I'll start, I'll leave some small ones at the top. Kind of like they're blowing over a wall or down from just from a pile. Maybe they were hooshed up in the wind or so they're coming down and then the bigger, the nearer they come, they'll be bigger. So they'll be slightly bigger. And I'm tipping each one with a tiny bit of red to get that russety looking colouring. I'll shape the leaves later when I'm felting, but for the moment I'm just visualising this pretty scape. And I'd like to embellish that somehow, and I don't want it to be too structured, so I had a necklace in place there first, and I was like, no way. I want it to be free and floaty, and you know, you get the picture. So I'm thinking, of fronds. Now I could rethink this, but I'm thinking underneath at the back, these kind of fronds going that way. But it's just to give a different dynamic to the shape. And it won't be as obvious as this because when you needle felt, the strands go into the other, into the base. So it won't be as obvious. Another time we'll do wet felting, but for the moment, that's what I'm going to do. And the neckline, I have to think of something good for the neckline. Now that's the basis of my design. It's just the start part. So I've done a little bit of something to the neckline, as you can see. It's a little bit of a pattern, but it's not equal in every part. And it won't stay like that. That is just a basic. I'm going to form it as I go along. But I'd like it to be cosy and warm up there. I may have to add red, but I'm fighting against flinging every colour at this under the sun, which is, you know, something that I do. And I'm trying to be restrained, let's say. So I'm going to do that first and see how I feel. And I'm going to do the leaves. What I would like them to be is kind of flitty and floaty in different shapes. And I'd like little stalks coming out here. And I'd like them like they're flowing away on the, the breeze like that. And I'd like some little wisps blowing around just to show that there's a little wind so I have some little wisps there. So what I'll do now is I will get these down and then we'll work on it further from there. This is a tricky bit getting the brush inside here and I mustn't think that it's like ink or anything. If something falls it falls. I'm getting it into position so that I can you know this is like a baby sponge or a special needle felting brush. So there's my first leaf and I'm, this is all you do. I'll show you now. So a leafy. I'm just not going to fuss over this. I'm not going to pick a leaf style. I'm just going to say, I think I'll keep the red though to the tip. And I'd like the tips to be upward so that the, the heavier part of the leaf is falling. And then I can really, really make this more exact later with some embroidery if I want. You know, so if I want to do the stalk down the center or something like that. But for now, don't be afraid. The main thing is to get it secured on there in the kind of shape that you're looking for. That's the little wispy tip, remember? So I'm going to keep that as pointy as I can because sometimes the tips of the leaves go red. So this is just direct into the uh, cloth. Now I'm brave with this because this is not a brand new jumper. It's been worn a little bit. It's not worn out or anything like that. It's got plenty of life left in it. But if I had just bought this jumper, <laughs> And it was like whatever handmade jumper or something that was really fantastically valuable in a sense of that. I wouldn't be as brave. I'm I'm brave and bold because I know it could have gone to landfill and instead I'm going to breathe a little bit of life in it and have it myself. So that's beginning to look like a leaf. So what I'm going to do is just get them into into place like that now so that we can play with the pattern except meanwhile meanwhile I will try and nurse it over a little bit to the neckline and see how that's going to work before I stop to work on my own for a while it's tricky now to get that in place because it doesn't want to move so I just want to show you what it's like here around the neckline show myself what it's like 
that's thicker up there it's double material so i'm just gonna go for it look there da, 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 da. just be careful with your needles and it's straightening it out because they can especially if there's a tough part i'll do these bits that are working easily i've never wet felted onto acrylic jumper onto an acrylic jumper i don't know well, it might work i'm sure it would to be fairly determined but it might not shrink as much i don't know i don't know that's a whole other topic now see the way it's very defined because it's needle felted in i want it a little bit more ambiguous than that i'm worried about the needles here because that's thick and it's not going in as easily but i'll get there i hate breaking needles it's the same if i ever use a machine which is seldom now as you can see it's all coming together i quite like it actually i'll probably add more but you can see that it's taking shape this is what it looks like on the inside so it just comes through like regular needle felting and i'm going to carry on and show you then so that's just the spot to be gentle with when you're doing it i like it to kind of cross over a little bit if it can without being too bossy about it <laughs> it's a bit like painting you just want to take the little pieces and the little parts that you want at the time so i've set all the leaves kind of floating the idea is that it's going to come down here there's the odd one coming from that side I have some swirls in place. I'm going to put in another one. Well, I have one swirl in place. I'm going to put in another wispy, wispy curl here. So this is lighter in color here so that it still gives the idea of the, the V and then the focus would be on the sides. And my idea is I'm going to keep building. Oh, yeah, I added some dark, dark red. I knew I had some darker red. It's kind of like a burgundy. I added that in to kind of bring the tone down. It was just a little bit too much. Although I like the Irish flag as much as anybody, it was just very flag-like. We've brought down the tone a little bit with that deeper red and I like it. I'm going to build a pile. I'm going to build a pile and actually down at the bottom of, it's kind of out of the picture, but I'll build a little pile of leaves at the bottom here. So that's the idea. They're floating all the way down to the ground. And I have a little poem that goes with that, which I'll put up at some point in the video as well. It's a little poem I wrote when I was a child. I have it in the blog and the parade I made craft blog this month, actually. And I, I didn't intend, I said in the, in the blog that I could actually do an autumn themed design based on my little poem, a little four line poem that I wrote when I was a child. And I didn't expect that this might be it, but it actually is it because that's what it's about. It's about simply about leaves falling and building a pile on the hard dry ground. So <laughs> that's what's happening. And I did not intend that to happen. I'm going to do more swirls all around. Keep dreaming. It's very meditative, I have to say. You just have to keep on. To do these swirls, it's easy enough. You do this, I'm doing them nice and broad, open, like so they're not too tight looking. I want them to be wispy. I might get some straw coloured as well. And you have to do quite a lot of this stabbing, by the way, with your felting pen to make it adhere. You can pull it up off your sponge or your brush and then just make sure that you're not going to snap all of the the threads in your jumper so that you have a hole just have to monitor that a little bit but it's a lovely way to jazz up something that's old or used or going in the bin and you just like the shape you like the comfort but you don't like you want it to be different you know what i'm saying it comes up a little bit every time so you just have to keep adhering it until you feel happy that it's secured i'm going to proceed with that we'll do a further embellishment next week on this project because this is going to take a little while i want to really really go for it on the neck as well and do some beautiful embellishment on the arms this is going to be my gorgeous autumn upcycled jump da -da -da -da. so i hope that that has inspired you somewhat to get out your felting pen 
and your old jumpers and things and start to do a project. I'm so proud of myself when I start a project and it's great to have the company to be able to speak to people to have that purpose because it's making me do these projects. I have hundreds of projects. I go, oh, I'll do that. Oh, that'd be lovely to do that. That'd be a great idea. That'd be a great idea. And there are projects that I actually want to do, like really want to do. So thank you for watching and good luck with your stuff this week. And I will show you the second part of this video next week when this is more developed. See you next week. Enjoy yourself. Mm -hmm.